Today we'll be taking a look at the story about the new WWE Bray Wyatt merchandise that has just popped up, trouble in the SmackDown women's division, and more. For today's question of the day, would you like to see more of the SmackDown women's division be used on SmackDown? Let's actually talk about this situation because it's a growing concern and a conversation that the fans are constantly having for both brands, but mostly SmackDown. SmackDown is a loaded roster, probably too loaded for its own good, but the SmackDown women's division heavily lacks logic in multiple ways and has several missing pieces. Let's start off with Bailey going down with a torn ACL. That was obviously horrific and unexpected. So WWE had to turn to a backup plan. Instead of a contenders match or anything like that, Carmella was just automatically gifted multiple title matches with Bianca Belair in place of Bailey. But after Carmella lost a few times, the entire SmackDown women's division seemed to be just Carmella and Zelina Vega. Those two were the ones that confronted Bianca Belair week in and week out. Those two are great talents. It's not a problem with them. It's a problem with the logic. Carmella was coming off multiple title matches that she lost against Bianca Belair. Shouldn't she be pushed to the back of the line? How is she still coming out and demanding title opportunities? Selena Vega hasn't won a match since September 2020 and lost a handful of matches in a row since her return in July. How in the world is she still considered a top contender without a single win in a full calendar year? So that's our two top contenders in the SmackDown women's division. Carmella, who's coming off multiple match losses to the champion, and Zelina, who hasn't won a single match in a year. Yet those are the two superstars that are constantly surrounding the title picture, as if there's no other option on the roster. Before this week's SmackDown, Liv Morgan had been put off of television for 40 days, so at least she's back and can hopefully pick back up from where she last left off at before her 40-day disappearance. But then you got others like Maya Yim, who has been on the SmackDown roster since the spring and nothing has been done with her over there. You got Tony Storm, who they debuted on the July 23rd edition of SmackDown and then instantly forgot about her existence. Which is really weird. Usually when they hype up a debut and introduce someone new to the main roster, we usually see them pick up a few quick wins for several weeks in a row to build them up. Tony picked up her debut win over Zelina Vega and was never seen from again. And to add more issues to the logic flaws here, Zelina came out that following week after suffering that loss to Tony Storm and wanted a title opportunity, which again makes no sense. If that was the case, it should have been Tony out there making her case for the opportunity rather than the individual that she beat. Then, Sasha Banks came back and got her WrestleMania rematch booked for SummerSlam and understandably so. Everyone knew that Sasha would get her match, but technically speaking, Sasha didn't do anything to actually earn the title match itself. Then Becky Lynch comes out at SummerSlam and again, same issue, right off the couch and into the title picture with no questions asked and without earning the opportunity. So Sasha got an automatic rematch, Becky got an automatic title match, but Bianca Belair had to compete in a fatal four-way elimination match to earn her title rematch? See, why couldn't Bianca just get an automatic title rematch the same way Sasha did? It's the inconsistencies there that really make no sense. So even though the SmackDown roster is loaded in the talent department, it's extremely flawed in the logic department. You have a superstar who hasn't won a match in a year, who's constantly around the title picture. Superstars coming over from Raw, superstars that are missing with no explanation, superstars who make their debut before vanishing, and superstars who are rarely used. So it's something that the fans are bringing up a lot online and discussing, so it's definitely worth mentioning. Speaking of the SmackDown women's division, we had our first look this week at the new heel version of Becky Lynch. Becky's heel turn is getting a lot of comparisons to Roman's heel turn from last year. But Roman's turn happened almost instantly. On his first SmackDown back, he was already introduced with his alliance with Paul Heyman, and his heel turn was confirmed right away. But telling by Becky's SmackDown promo, she seems to be in the tweener state right now. 
Becky still got love from the crowd when she came out, but there was a lot of hints and teasers hidden there in her words. She talked about how she's more dangerous. She mentioned how she was fighting for herself in the past, but now she's fighting for her family. She brought up SummerSlam, which got a lot of boos from the live crowd because they obviously don't like what she did. Becky said that she's not sorry about anything and that she did what she needed to do. And when confronted by Bianca Belair for them to have a match tonight, Becky said, nah, not tonight, and walked away. So Becky didn't attack the crowd and go after them specifically, but she had a lot of heel antics in her words and actions. A babyface champion doesn't say, not tonight, to a challenger. The babyface champions are always obsessed with being fighting champions. They want to accept every challenge that comes their way. So for Becky to sort of give off that, nah, I don't feel like fighting tonight vibe, that lets us know that she's definitely not the champion she was during her 400-day reign. Like she alluded to several times in the promo, this is a new Becky. Is she heel? Is she face? It may be too early to tell. Maybe she remains in that sort of neutral ground area where she can bounce back and forth between heel and face. Maybe that's a possible option for the new Becky. That's sort of what Charlotte Flair was in early 2020, just a neutral character that wasn't tied down to one side. So we'll see how this new persona for Becky continues to be revealed to us. For today's final story, we'll be going over the new merchandise situation with Bray Wyatt. Even though Bray Wyatt is now gone from WWE, new merchandise items seem to still be on the way for his WWE character. It was just announced that a Christmas-themed Fiend toy will be dropping soon as an exclusive WWE item for some stores. It was also noted by the fans at the SummerSlam Superstore that WWE was still selling the replica version of the Fiend's Universal title. Not only that, but they had the display set up perfectly and even had the Lily doll resting over the Fiend's Universal title. So, there were some fans that questioned what this all meant and if Bray is back or what's going on. And the short answer is, unfortunately, no. This same sort of thing happened with Aleister Black a few months ago. WWE officially dropped a shirt that came out well after Aleister Black was released, and fans were questioning at the time if he was coming back. The merchandise items are just done well in advance. Obviously, the Christmas-themed Fiend figure was probably finished months ago, and they were just getting it ready for the holiday season. And if they still have leftover merchandise, like the Fiend's replica title, for example, they can still put that up for sale, even after the Superstar is released, because it's their own property. They own the rights to the character and merchandise, so they can sell it without the talent themselves being signed to the company. So unfortunately, the new Bray Wyatt merchandise doesn't mean he's on his way back to WWE. But if you've been keeping an eye on his socials, then you already know that he's hard at work, cooking something new up for his next chapter in his wrestling career, and we all can't wait to see what that turns out to be. But what are your thoughts on today's stories with the SmackDown Women's Division, Becky Lynch, and Bray Wyatt? Leave your comments, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys!